Okay, so recently Tesla made their second attempt at getting the Model S. It's um IIHA top safety pick and it didn't go so well. Basically what happened was in the uh, front overlap test, they expected to get a good rating this time. And once again, they got an acceptable rating, which means no top safety pick. They still have five star ratings for NHTSA, but not for IIHA. Uh, the main thing I got out of it was their response. Um, I found their response a little bit childish and immature and a little petty. I don't even know what they were trying to get at. It, it almost seemed like they were yelling conspiracy theory or something like that. I, 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 don't, I think they took it a little too personally. Their response should have been something like, we at Tesla continue to make hardware improvements on the production line and we have software improvements that we sent out over the air to all of our fleet to improve the safety and the driving performance and customer satisfaction of all our vehicles. We will continue to strive to have a five-star rated vehicles in all categories. You know, it's just stuff like that. You know, good. just take it well. That's not what they did. That's not what they did at all. Tesla's response was, the IHS and dozens of other private industry groups around the world have methods and motivations that suit their own subjective purposes. Sounds like they think it's a conspiracy. Because apparently Tesla was the only company to have ever failed this test. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, and it's it, the subjective purposes. Now, I don't know what subjective purposes they could be talking about. Um, the test seems pretty objective to me. It seems very much straightforward, um, and, and they, they seem to do it exactly the same for every car. I don't know what could possibly make that a subjective test. But I did start to wonder about it and just... Because I hear about the test all the time, the five-star ratings and all that stuff, but I don't know what is what, so I, I went and looked at it. And the, um, sp sp um, specifically the, um, the small front overlap test, um, um, they started doing it in, in 2012. And basically, they moved the car, the, the car goes at 40 miles per hour, um, and they impact 25% of the front of the the front corner of the car it's a lot more difficult to get a good rating on this test trying to crash everything into 25 percent of the front of the car instead of 40 percent of the front of the car like the uh, moderate overlap test you know, basically the test uh, simulates crashing into a tree or a pole or driving on a um, driving on a two-lane road and the oncoming traffic kind of swerves into your lane and but not completely just to where the front corners of the cars will collide into each other so we've been told that this is a really safe car and why does it have trouble with this particular test so i started to so i mean what what are the advantages to the car as far as frontal crashes go you don't have a big engine in the front of the car you have the just a your front and just space and it just acts as a huge crumple zone for the car but when you do this test the crumple zone pretty much goes away because the front is more so in the center and the um this test isn't really testing that that front corner the 25 percent of the car that's basically about the the width of the headlight that's basically what they're crashing they're crashing the headlight and that goes and the impact just goes to, from the headlight right through the wheel well right into right into where I'm sitting <laughs> and it's pretty much the same on all cars that you don't Tesla doesn't really have an advantage there and another thing is just the the sheer weight of the car this car weighs it starts out with the base 75 uh, kilowatt hour battery and you're looking at close to 4,500 pounds and that's fine um, if you're doing a straight head-on collision and you have the whole front and the whole front area to uh, dissipate the the force of the, the crash. 
But when you only have that, when you're taking all that weight and you're making that force go into that 25% area and it's all crashing into one spot, then you have a problem because you have 4,500 pounds traveling at 40 miles per hour and you're going to basically crash it all through the headlight. And that's the only area that can absorb any of the, the impact. And it's kind of like, oh, this is a bad example, whatever. It's kind of like if you wanted to punch someone. Um, if you punch someone and you went right at them with your fist, and your fist was nice and easy, you can you could spread that impact all over your fist through you know through your whole fist, and it won't hurt your hand too much. But if some reason you have like a weird hand situation and you went like these two knuckles first, and these two got all the impact, you might hurt yourself. Cause you still got all the force coming, but it's only getting the pain is only going to get dissipated through these two fingers. Yes, but the Tesla is a very heavy car. But I mean, it, it can't be. It's not the heaviest car. It, um, I'm sure other cars have um, passed it. And I looked at it, and I looked at all the large cars and large luxury cars, and they tested 27 at the time I checked it, and 19 of them past the um the small front overlap test um and of those 1913 got top safety picks let's see uh the Buick LaCrosse the Kia Cadenza Toyota Avalon Acura RLX Audi A6 BMW 5 Series Genesis G80 Genesis G90 Infiniti Q70 Lexus RC Lincoln Continental Mercedes-Benz E-Class Volvo S90 Buick Regal Hyundai Azera, they stopped making it. Cadillac XTS, Maserati Ghibli, Lexus GS, and Lexus LS. I looked at those vehicles, and um, it looked like they were kind of testing, uh, testing mostly um, base model cars. So I went with the lower weights that I could find on them, and only two of those vehicles that passed the test actually weigh more than the Model S, the Genesis G80 and the Genesis G90. So I thought that was interesting. Because I, I I mean, I already thought to myself that um that the weight could be a problem just because of the way the test is. It will make it difficult for the Tesla to, to pass the test because you don't have the crumple zone, but you have a ton of weight. Another thing was the headlights. They didn't specifically say anything about the headlights as far as the recent um, crash testing was concerned, so I'm guessing nothing was done, but they did say last time that they were working with the supplier on, I guess, ways to make them better. But I've got, I'm looking at it and it it, it kind of makes it seem like getting the upgraded headlights for your Model S doesn't seem like it's worth it at all. Um, the high beams and low beams were all rated inadequate when um, driving around curves. That was if you had the base or if you got the um, the upgraded adaptive lights. And no matter which light package you got, if you were driving straight, the high beams were rated good and the low beams were rated fair. I would feel a little cheated if I paid extra to get those um those adaptive headlights and according to the IIHA, they aren't necessarily better. But that's all for now. I was just a little confused at um Tesla's sudden inability to handle constructive criticism. Um well, let me know what you think in the comments.